Hello everyone. So today we're going to be taking a look at this Hasek fan. I just got this at a flea market. What's cool about these, you don't see these too often anymore. I don't know if they sell them at all. The way this fan works is it pulls air up from the bottom and then blows it out in a complete circle all around it. So it blows air out of the top vents and those go all around the entire fan. So it blows out air in 360 degrees. This style fan is great to have near a central air vent. It'll really help uh, move that air around the room. And it's great, it's just a general whole room circulator. Uh, these are really cool, and it's sad they don't make them anymore, but I, I just happened to find this one. I was like, oh, okay, what the heck? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tear this all apart and I'm going to service it. And I'm gonna film that so that if you ever come across one of these, or if you ever wanna fix a fan in general, I should cover, I think, the basics. So I've never taken one of these apart before, and I've only worked on really like one other Hasek fan in my life. Uh, so it'll be a learning experience for me too. As you can see, this is yellowed quite a bit. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to use um, either Retro Bright or hydrogen peroxide or whatever it is that you use to brighten these up. And I'm gonna try that on this plastic here and then try to get it looking great again. So we'll see how this goes. This whole thing is plastic. Um, the other one I have is all metal. You can tell this is a later one, but I'm still guessing this is from the 70s or early 80s would be my guess. Probably just because it's all plastic, maybe the early 80s. I'm gonna give this a little test before I take it apart. So on the low speed, it definitely sounds pretty rocky. Once it gets up to speed, it seems fine, but also the wind down should probably take a lot longer. Oh yeah, so that so the motor's probably tight. It probably just needs to be taken apart, cleaned, and oiled. Now I'm gonna start taking this apart. I've never done this before, and I don't really know what to expect here. I've never taken a Hasek fan completely apart before, but uh, this is just a Lasco fan from the era. I'm not expecting it to be too bad. Uh, all the screws are on the bottom, so we're gonna start there. So you can see the front, and you can see how yellow the plastic is. I'm going to try to address that. As I take the screws out along the way, I'm going to mark what goes where, that way I don't uh, lose anything. And what I'm seeing here, I'm seeing screws that looks like that run uh, through the main body here. So all of these screws are really long. And I'm gonna see if any of these will now fall out. Great. So here's what we're looking at, and the way this works is it blows the air upward, it hits this dome here, and then spreads it out all around it. So that's the whole point of these. Now that this is a part, you know, you can see how dirty these are, and these parts I'm just going to wash. So those are the four posts, and those screws... run all the way down. You can see how dirty those are. Wow. Isn't that something? Those are the screws that hold the entire fan together. That is crazy. I've never seen that before. Those are some really long screws for an appliance. So now the main body separates from the rest of it. And let's see if the switch is easy to disconnect from the rest of this. I hope you can see that. So this knob just comes off. And then if I'm lucky, it looks like, oh, there's a screw right here. And then I'll be able to remove the switch and I'll be able to remove this whole center, the main body, I guess, whatever you want to call it. So there's just that small screw that came out and now okay so now I can separate this this is the part that I'm going to uh, attempt to clean with um, retro bright you can see how dirty that is you know fans on the inside they just build up a dust over time and that's perfectly normal so now we've got our switch assembly and here's our fan blade itself and you can see how dusty all that is and I'm gonna remove this nut and then hopefully the blade will come out and we'll go from there little washer and now hopefully this blade will just pop out yep and it does so there we go so then again this dirty um what looks like entirely decent style blade uh, i will wash and then get it working or looking great Okay, so now uh, another part that I can just wash. 
Got this thing now all apart in layers. The last thing I'm gonna do is remove the motor, which is sandwiched. Uh, this is, no, it's still plastic, but this motor feels pretty heavy. And that might be an oil port right there. We'll find out. It's held in with six screws, three on the bottom and three on the top. I've already got different types of screws, so I am gonna have to label this along the way. And here's the motor. A couple cord grommets that I've got to work through to, to get the wiring out, and then I'll be able to disconnect that, everything from this. So now I'm gonna mark what wires go where before I separate them. And the yellow goes with the yellow. That's easy enough, right? And this one goes with the blue. Reasonable enough. I'm only gonna take apart this wiring as much as I have to, but if I color code, that will hopefully that'll help. So in order to separate this from all of this, I'm gonna have to undo quite a few more wires. Start marking these, I suppose. Okay, with that, this is as far as I'm going to take this apart because I'm just going to physically clean all of this, including the cord, and, uh, and then rewire it. Okay, with that, I'm now going to lift up these four clips here and here, and then hopefully this whole thing will come apart and I'll have access to the bearings. And then I'll just oil it. It looks like there's oil holes here. A lot of fans, older fans, would have oil ports, and I see two dots, and I'm assuming that's where you would put an oil. But while I'm here, I'm going to open it up. Why not? I'm really trying to do this without stabbing myself if I can. And I think this thing was probably kept in like a garage or something for years. And I'm just gonna have to be careful here. So this is a capacitor. I was wondering what the heck that was. It's a giant old capacitor. I try to pry away from myself, not towards myself. Whoops. I mean, I could just be destroying this in real time. I have no idea. Because there's these dots here, I really don't know if I can take this apart further, but I'm gonna try. Okay, so just kind of split it open, try it on this side, and it is coming apart now. Okay, so here's what we're looking at. So here's your rear bearing, and that is, that's really gunked up. What these clips are, this is a bearing retainer. So I can lift that out, and then there's this thing. I'll try to keep this all in the right order and I'll clean this. And then here's your rear motor bearing. And I was right, that is an oil port because what that would do is it would fill up this felt pad here. And this is really gunked up, so I'm going to clean this with WD-40 and then I'm gonna lubricate it with three-in-one motor oil. And I'll clean all this as well. The way the field coil is set up here and the armature, I might be able to knock this pin out and then uh, drop out the armature. Uh, I guess I'll try that. Okay, so now, the armature, it's kind of a cool looking armature, is coming out. Look at that. Hmm. And then in here is your other bearing. So your other sleeve bearing, that's in a similar bearing retainer. I'm assuming it's, a, it's uh, an identical part to that. Without removing this field coil, I'm not getting that other bearing retainer out. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean this out as is, and then I'll clean uh, the armature, an interesting looking armature. Ooh, at this point, I'm just going to clean all this stuff, and I think I'm having a reaction to the copper. Uh, and then I'll, I'll repack it with 3-in-1 motor oil. So this is as far as I'm going to take this apart because I don't want to risk damaging this uh, field coil if I attempt to remove this now. I'm just going to leave it in, clean all this out, lubricate that bearing, and then that one as well, this rear one, and then I'll put the whole thing back together. But first, I now have a whole bunch of parts to wash. Here are the parts I'm going to wash. I'm not opposed to cleaning parts in a dishwasher, as it works very well, but given the age of these plastic parts, I don't want them to discolor or fade in the dishwasher. So I'm simply going to hand wash all these items with a little dish soap. Here's where I am now. I've washed most of the main fan parts. I just lubricated and put back together this motor, and to be honest, getting those four clips back into place took a long time, so it was a huge pain. So next time I won't do that. I'll just use the oil port here and fill it up. Because it, uh, it was unnecessary and it was, a, it was a hassle getting it all back together. But now it is back together and I lubricated it. The ends are the same. They just go around and they clip in four spots. So I'll show you what I did on the other one. The way this works, and clean this, is there's this um, felt pad and the bearing, it's called a sleeve bearing, sits in the center. This gets uh, soaked in oil and it keeps the bearing lubricated. So the bearing just sits in like this and then this spring goes inside here, and I'm pretty sure this is the way it was. That goes around there like that, and then this clip goes on it. While I have this apart, I'm gonna oil this, and I have three-in-one motor oil, and motor oil is specifically designed for oiling sleeve bearings like on this fan here. 
this has needed it for a long time and I'm probably putting too much, but I just got that nice and wet. You know, while I have it apart and I can do it, why not? So then that goes like that. And we'll see how long it takes me to line these four up because it took those four forever. But it was a lot harder because I still had the armature in, so it was difficult to put it back on. Okay, see how those four are starting to pop out here? So what I'm gonna do, because this is now kind of spring-loaded with that retaining spring in there, I'm going to have to press this down and then I'm going to have to hit these into place. So what I'm gonna do, I'm sure there's better things I could do, but I'm just gonna put a hammer underneath it. And now those four tabs are popped up. When you put this in, this is, a, it's a slightly, uh, I guess, radial. And you can move this around. So you can do that until it lines up. Whoops. Along with that, you have to make sure all these little washers are in the correct order. If any of these are out of place, the motor can lock up and it won't work the way it's supposed to. <laughs> okay, but I was showing that, and of course, this actually goes in this way, it's the bottom. Rotates like that, so now I can actually put the motor back together. I've lubricated both bearings. In fact, I'm gonna hit this in the center with a little bit more. So again, while I have it apart, the whole point of that was to lubricate this. So it's needed it, it sounded rough, and now it's going to work a lot better. And I'm going to now double check and make sure I have this uh, rotated the same way it was before. That may not make a difference, but I'm going to do it anyways. I changed the alignment to, I think, more where I think it was, it was originally. And it seemed like it fell right back into place really easy. Oh yeah, that's spinning so nice and smooth now. That's great. And then this is just some sort of little locking pin. I'm going to put that back on. And it was just like that. It was, I think it was a little off. But already, that's going to make a nice difference. Now that I have the motor back together, I'm going to put it back into place and reconnect the wiring. And I'm gonna do this before I finish, before I reassemble the whole fan. But when this is done, it'll be an opportunity to test the motor. So this capacitor slides in here. So I'm thinking I have the orientation pretty close to where it needs to be. I, I marked my screws and made a little punch card. None of my screwdrivers have any bite on these screws. Now that these three are back into place, I can put them in the three retainers. And we'll see how this goes. And I'm going to verify that I have this lined up the right way, uh, or at least the same as the pictures. I'm going to do it evenly, not tightening these down too much yet. So there we go. That's on good. That's spinning nice. So now I've got to wire all this up. Okay, I'll start by feeding these wires back through. All the parts are washed and the next thing I'm going to do is clean this up. I need to get all the scratches and little blemishes off of this. Okay, so now I'm going to use a product. This is called uh, RetroBright. And I had a friend mention this to me years back and I couldn't find exactly, I think, what he was talking about. But this is the same thing. It's made to restore yellow plastic and it's made for uh, things like appliances, old computers, electronics, and toys, you know, any, any old plastic item that's done what this did, which is badly yellow. So what you're supposed to do with this stuff is first you, you clean the item you're gonna apply this to thoroughly. Uh, you cover up anything you don't want it to, I guess, penetrate, which would be this, um, the label here. Uh, I'm gonna cover that with tape. Then with using a brush, you apply this to the entire thing. Then you wrap this in saran wrap or plastic wrap. They said a plastic bag too, but I only have heavy duty garbage bags. So that I don't have anything that'll work. And then the last thing is you put this out in direct sunlight and it says 48 hours. And hopefully today I've only got so much sunshine left. So hoping that we'll be able to get a nice difference out of it. 
I'm also going to apply it to this knob, which is yellow. Okay, that took, just cover, masking the decals took longer than I thought. So with RetroBright, they recommend that you wear both gloves and goggles. So this stuff must be extremely toxic. And I've never used it before, but we're gonna see how it does. I ended up having to apply RetroBright twice to get the result I wanted. It worked well and restored the plastic parts to their original light beige color. Sadly, the painter's tape didn't seal well enough, and this process ended up damaging both the logo decal and the color of the sticker on the knob. I was disappointed by this, so if you attempt this, please learn from my own mistakes. With that, this is now going to go out and sit in the sun and bake for the next four to eight hours. I wish I would have given myself more time to do this. I only probably have four or five hours of daylight left. So we'll come back to this, we'll see how it does. What RetroBright says, if the results aren't dramatic enough, you just wash it, you reapply it, and you do it again. I just wanted to look how it originally did. Uh, it does seem to work well. I've heard good things from other people using this process. <laughs> So there you have it. I've always liked these ottoman fans, and this one now works great and is hopefully ready for a few more decades of use. When servicing any older fan, just like this one, most of them have oil ports to lubricate the front and rear motor bearings. What I did here today is applicable to servicing many older fans, which tend to move much more air than newer models, and if regularly maintained, are built to run for decades. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and as always, thank you for watching, and have a great day.